Hi everyone, my name is Paul Davids and in this video I will try to explain the big advantages of the pentatonic scale. But first I'd like to point out there is absolutely no reason not to learn more scales than just the pentatonic scale. But understanding how versatile that scale can be can really bring your playing to the next level. And secondly, the pentatonic scale is a really friendly scale. It translates very well to the guitar and makes a great fundament for improvising. So if you want to know how to use a scale in more ways than just... This video is for you. I made some backing tracks which are available at my Patreon page that will function as examples, but you can do this on every backing track there is. I'm in the key of C sharp minor and we start out by using this pattern 912, 911, 911, 911, 912, 912. We all know that one, I'm sure. And we're going to explore something I'd like to call horizontal versus vertical improvising. Question. What is horizontal and vertical improvising? I'm glad you asked. So let's start off with horizontal. We know the backing track is in the key of C sharp minor and that's all we care about right now. We don't really care about the chord changes other than try to make it sound good with the notes we're playing. That's your horizontal playing over there. For this kind of playing, I can use all the five minor pentatonic shapes. But I'm only playing five different notes because the pentatonic scale is made up of only five unique notes. So that's your horizontal playing over there. But if you want to spice it up a little bit, you can try to have a look at vertical improvising. This is where you look at the chords we're playing over and choose your notes accordingly. So what that does is you can put emphasis on the notes from the chords you're currently playing over. A real powerful tool other than just playing in the key of the chords. So your playing can outline the chord that is being played. And that is where the pentatonic really shines because it fits perfectly over all the most used chords. So the chords from the backing track were C sharp minor, A, E, B. So you see I was mostly playing in the same positions, but I was changing scales each time a chord changed. And I totally understand if you don't know all the shapes I was playing. So at first you can really just focus on the positions you do know. So the shapes I was playing were C sharp minor, A major, which you can see as the same as F sharp minor, but then starting on your pinky. You don't have to start on the note A, but it's just a good reference point. The next shape was E major, which is the same as C sharp minor. And the last one was B. So four different scales, four different chords. So now we've only been playing pentatonic scales, but if we threw all those notes on a pile and made a scale out of these notes, we would have the C-sharp minor scale, Aeolian. So all the notes together make the C-sharp minor scale. So the C-sharp minor pentatonic is only five notes, and the C-sharp minor is seven notes. So the two notes we're not playing in the pentatonic are the D-sharp and the A. Well, the D-sharp is the third note from the B pentatonic scale, and the A is from the A pentatonic scale. So we're just soloing in C sharp minor, but we're using the pentatonic scale to carefully select the notes when and where we want to use them. So it really helps if you can play these scales quickly, favorably in more than one position. For example, A major. So you can quickly change when the chord is changing. And the following bit is very important, so listen carefully. What you want to do is find a good balance between horizontal and vertical playing. One is not really more desirable than the other, 
but you should combine them to taste. There are no rules, it's just what you think sounds best. Sometimes it can sound real artificial when you're constantly changing patterns, so only playing vertical. And sometimes it could be real boring playing just horizontal. Oh, and sometimes the chord changes are just too fast to bother. Let me give you an example. In this pattern, the chords were C sharp minor followed by an A chord. And the A chord is pretty similar to the C sharp minor. Two notes are overlapping. And the A note could be a little forced when you're really playing that one. So let me C sharp minor. That note feels a little bit like it doesn't feel very musical. If you're playing the C sharp minor scale over the A major chord, you're basically making an A major 7 of the chord because the G sharp is making an A major 7. The G sharp is the major 7 of A. So if you keep on playing C sharp minor over A, it sounds a little more musical, for me at least. Of course it's all taste, but I would personally do that. So up to now we only played in position 9, so to speak, like up here. But you can also play all these scales at the 4th position, for example, C sharp minor. A. C sharp minor. Or E. C sharp minor. So it really unlocks the fretboard, as they say. And there's so much more to the pentatonic scale than just this. But this is a real good starter if you want to get more out of the pentatonic scale than just playing it up and down. In the next video, I'm going to take you through how you can use the pentatonic scale when we encounter a so-called non-diatonic chord, a chord that isn't in the key we're playing in, and how you can solo over that. So follow me on Instagram if you want to see more at Paul Davis Guitar. And like, share or comment on this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already and don't forget to hit the bell alert button if you want to be notified by my videos. This was Paul, see you next time. Have a wonderful Pentatonic day. Bye.